Coming up on this week's show, we welcome fellow podcasters Jessica and Marky from the Top to Bottom Podcast. Welcome to the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for readers and writers of gay romance fiction. If you can read it, write it, watch it, or listen to it, these two guys are going to talk about it. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Adams and Will Knauss. Welcome to episode 130 of Jeff and Will's Big Gay Fiction Podcast. I'm Jeff from JeffAdamsWrites.com. And I'm Will from WillKanaus.com. This week's episode is brought to you in part by listeners just like you. We will have more information on how you can help support the show in just a few moments. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had an enjoyable Easter or Passover. Or if you choose not to celebrate any religious holidays, we hope you had a terrific week and a terrific weekend and got lots of great books read. Absolutely. Welcome to April. (laughs) Here we go. Awesome. Spring has hopefully sprung where you are. I know I know a lot of people are still digging out from, <laughs> you know, the various and sundry snowstorms that have happened recently. I hope you're staying warm and reading good books. So, yes. the past week. The past week. Uh, we went back to see Love, Simon again yesterday, uh, which was awesome. I can't remember the last time that I've been to a theater to see a movie a second time. It has been ages since I've done that, and this one was well worth it. I think, I think I might have actually liked it even more the second time. And I was pretty gaga over it the first one. Um, I, I'm just I'm dazzled by the way that Nick Robinson uh, portrays a teenager who's got all this angst and stuff built up. And um, as I watch the scene with Jennifer Gardner, where she tells him that he can finally exhale. Every scene after that, you just it, he 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 portrays it so perfectly. Uh, this is Simon's third week out at the theater, and if you haven't seen it in the theater yet, and you're thinking about it, you should probably get there soon uh, because it's probably going to start wrapping up its run here. I would think pretty soon uh, before it moves on to DVD and Blu-ray and on demand and all that stuff over the summer sometime. Uh, any thoughts on seeing it the second time? I also enjoyed it uh, on on second viewing. <laughs> um, uh, I was able to uh, enjoy um, the, um, I think the acting a little bit more. I think uh, once you know I've you know I've seen it before. I got the story down. I know what's going to happen. So yeah. I was able to enjoy the performances even more. I think everyone is pretty darn exceptional. I really really enjoy this movie a lot. Yeah, so go see it, and and we'll try to stop talking about it here soon. But it's it's such a watershed moment for for cinema to have this. Every time that Simon uh, kissed Blue as they connected, uh, it was just like, yeah, you're really seeing that right here on on the big screen in a big movie and not in an independent film. Uh, really good stuff there. Um, Writing continue well, not really writing, editing. I'm still editing on uh, Winger 3. I'm finally going to turn that in today. This is Sunday that we're recording, and I'm finally going to send it back uh, from the mass of editing notes that I got. And uh, it's a better book now because of it. Uh, editor Laura um, knows these characters, I think, just about as well as I do, and she makes stunning recommendations like, oh, yeah, I wish I'd thought of that. Uh, let me just write that at the end of the book now that you suggested it. So that'll be getting on its way. And, of course, uh, Winger 3 will be out in the fall. And we're actually one month away from Schooled, which is Winger book number two from coming out. It's on uh, pre-order, and there'll be links in the show notes if you would like to pick up your pre-order copy of Schooled. Now, just a super quick note. We will be at the L.A. Times Festival of Books. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, that's coming up. Uh, April 21, 22. Thank you. I wasn't sure of the date. But, uh, yes, it's coming up later this month. We will be there. Uh, and Jeff will be signing some early copies of Schooled. Yes. If you're if you're in the L.A. area and you want to pick up an early copy of Schooled, there will be paperbacks available at the L.A. Times Book Fair. Uh, some tracker hackers will be there as well, and we will be signing uh, paperbacks of Hockey Player's Heart as well. And as we get closer to that event, we'll give you far more details uh, on what we're doing there and uh, what else is going on there. Dream Spinner is going to have a what looks to be a pretty large uh, presence there again this year with several authors, and uh, we'll share that author list uh, once we know it. Mm-hmm. Also in 
fancy schmancy news. Um, <laughs> we reached a particular milestone in our co-written book, The Hockey Player's Heart. Came out in audiobook this week. Yes, it did. Uh, performed by Finn Sterling. Um, we've we've reviewed some of Finn's books on the show previously. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did The Fireman's Pole by Sue Brown, which we reviewed a few episodes back, as well as I did the version of Out of the Shadows, which was by Casey Wells, yes. um, also Dreamspun Desire that was out sometime mm-hmm. last year. Uh, we've liked Finn's work. Um, we've dabbled in uh, hearing the prologue. Of Hockey Player's Heart, and so far I like what he was doing with uh, Caleb and Aaron as their 16, 17 year old selves. Uh, I plan to give the book a listen. Uh, I don't know if you want to hear our book read, some authors don't like that, uh, but I'm going to give it a go because I'm curious. Uh, I don't plan to review the book because that would be weird, although I will probably talk about Finn's performance a little bit uh, in a future show, probably next week because I think I'll do it this week. Uh, we also want to give you the chance to win a copy of the audiobook of Hockey Player's Heart. Uh, there's a raffle copter in this week's show notes. Uh, you can go and register to win, and we'll give some lucky listener an audible code to pick one up for themselves. Mm-hmm. So be sure and get in on the action. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And speaking of hockey action, uh, you like that segue? It was good, right? Uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty... pretty <laughs> I'll say it was fair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's. I'll take that. <laughs> uh, the NHL regular season uh, season season yeah. comes to an end this coming Saturday, April seventh, and that means that the changing on the fly second period charity anthology is going to disappear soon, as that was only scheduled to be out for the regular season. Uh, as a reminder, that uh, anthology includes stories from V. L. Losi, R. J. Scott, Heather Lear, and myself. And it all, all the proceeds are going to the You Can Play uh, charity, which supports equality and uh, all kinds of good stuff in sports. I'm blanking on its mission statement right now, but it's definitely in co- equality and inclusion in sports. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to pick that up, there's a link in the show notes. It's available on all the major platforms, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all that good stuff. So you've got about a week, maybe two at the outside to pick that up. And then in a future episode, uh, once we get all the proceeds, we'll come back and let you know. Uh, how the anthology did uh, for the for the uh, for the year. So yeah, good stuff there. It was an honor to be in the anthology with those wonderful authors. Mm-hmm. Uh, good friend of the podcast, Tammy Middleton, has just kicked off her sixth annual Autism Awareness Month auction uh, that will run uh, through April thirtieth, and it gives you a chance to bid on all kinds of amazing signed books, uh, get gift cards, some swag bags. I have to say, Charlie Cochet, oh my God, she's put a, a swag pack in for her new uh, series, the one that she started after Thirds, which I should have written in the name of, but I, I didn't, sorry. Um, but it's amazing. It's like I got a tote bag and a hoodie, and, ah. and it's, it's, it's significant, and I really kind of want it, but I am trying to refrain from bidding <laughs> on that too crazily. <laughs> uh, we have stuff in the auction, uh, autographed copies of the Winger books uh, for me, and we've got a autograph copy out there of uh, Hockey Player's Heart to get. So much good stuff. You can see full details at ttcbooksandmore.com. And uh, we'll also put links in the show notes uh, to get you to the places that you can see all the items for bid and to uh, be able to place that bid. Plus, Tammy's on the show next week. She's going to talk about that, plus her new book. So be on the lookout for that in episode 131. Fantastic. Indeed. Good stuff all around. Ah, One more. And then you could do your Patreon spiel. Oh, okay. What else? We One got more. So big congratulations uh, to Danny and the entire reviewing staff mm-hmm. of Love Bites Reviews. Danny, of course, is one of our contributors, and we're thrilled to have her and thrilled to wish Love Bites a very happy fifth anniversary. Uh, they're celebrating with a month of giveaways, and we've got a link in the show notes. So you can go check out the big post about all the all the giveaways that are going on. She's got so many authors involved in this. It's pretty awesome. Uh, again, we've put a copy of Hockey Player's Heart in there. Mm-hmm. You can win that book all over the place this month. <laughs> and it's not even the month that come out. Um, so check out lovebitesreviews.com or get the link in the show notes. And happy anniversary to Danny and Love Bites for all the awesome stuff uh, that they put out uh, for the community and the readers. Exactly. Now... We want to take a quick moment to say thank you to you, our listeners. Um, We're truly grateful that you show up every single week uh, to listen to us 
uh, give some news and notes about what's going on in the industry and also to hear us talk about books and uh, our various interviews with some really terrific people. I know. Uh, I'm, I'm continually surprised. Um, well, maybe not surprised. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy, very humbled that so many remarkable people choose to come on our show. Um, and we're so very happy that you uh, listen to us every single week. Um, now, you can help support the show uh, with a pledge through Patreon. For as little as 25 cents an episode, your pledge helps pay for the cost of producing and distributing this podcast. For p- fans who pledge at the silver and gold levels, you'll have the exclusive opportunity to ask questions of some of our amazing guests, which I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, any month that our pledges cover our monthly production costs, we'll produce a bonus episode, especially for our patrons. The April bonus will be available in just a few weeks. So um, if you are already a patron, go to patreon.com. And uh, if you'd like us to answer any questions or you know if there's anything you'd like us to discuss yeah. on this month's uh, special bonus episodes, uh, go to Patreon and shoot us an email, shoot us a question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we love to hear from folks and, and answer those questions. Yes. Yes. Now, you can help support the show. Uh, all you have to do is go to patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash biggayfictionpodcast. Um, go there, get your questions in, and we'll answer them. Uh, I believe the new bonus episode is coming up next week. No, it'll be out probably April 17th. <sighs> Sorry. Contradict me in Sorry. front of everybody. Yeah, Sorry. coming up real soon. April 17th. <laughs> April 17th. Yeah, so join us, won't you? In the Hockey Player's Heart, the feel-good gay romance by Jeff Adams and Will Knauss, hockey star Caleb Carter returns to his hometown to recover from an injury. He never expects to run into his one-time crush at a grade school fundraiser. Seeing Aaron Price hits him hard, like being checked into the boards. The attraction is still there, even after all these years, and Caleb decides to make a play for the school teacher. You miss 100% of the shots you never take, right? Aaron has been burned by love before, and can't imagine what a celebrity like Caleb could possibly see in a guy like him. Their differences are just too great. But as Aaron spends more time with Caleb, he begins to wonder if he might have what it takes to win the hockey player's heart. Get the hockey player's heart at dreamspinnerpress.com, amazon.com, and other online book retailers. Now, before we get to our good friends, Jess and Marky, from the Top to Bottom podcast, we want to quickly talk about some books that we read this past week. Yeah, absolutely. So I kicked off with History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Uh, it's a young adult novel. I've been wanting to read Adam's work for a while because he's he's highly regarded out there in the YA circles, and it became an imperative uh, because he and Becky Albertalli have a co-written book coming out later this year. And so I wanted to, to dabble on a little of Adam's books. In fact, if you look, if you watch Love, Simon closely, you actually see Adam, an Adam book up on his bookshelf over his desk, sitting alongside Becky's Upside of Unrequited, which is also up there. So anyway, another little Love, Simon tidbit. <laughs> um, this book was amazing. I will, I will give a little uh, heads up that it is a very emotional book to read uh, because it opens knowing that there's death. Um, at the forefront of this book. It's even in the blurb, actually. Uh, We open and find uh, Griffin, who is 17 years old. Uh, His first love and ex-boyfriend has died in a drowning accident in California. And uh, even though he had broken up with Theo before Theo moved out to California, um, they stayed close friends. Uh, He knows that that Theo had started seeing this guy named Jackson. Uh, But Griffin kind of always believed that Theo would come back into his life when the timing was right. Uh, They had had made promises to each other. uh, And unfortunately, one of Theo's promises was that he would not die. Um, So, of course, that just weighs all the more on Griffin as uh, as they uh, find out about this. The book shifts from the present. uh, And in the present, we actually start on the day of Theo's funeral. And Griffin, throughout the book, is telling stories about Theo and how they, how they met, how they became boyfriends, how they came out to each other, and just so you get the arc of their romance, including the breakup, um, in the history parts of the book, and then in the present is 
Griffin dealing with uh, Theo's death and his grief, the grief of his friends, um, what to do with Jackson, because Jackson comes to New York City for the funeral. Um, this is a very tough, but really an amazing book as as Griffin kind of navigates all of his emotions, uh, which are only compounded a little bit because he's also got some OCD. Um, he counts a lot. He needs everything to really end in even numbers. And he also has uh, this major need to walk and to be on the left of everything, um, which Theo dealt with perfectly because, you know, good boyfriends do that. Uh, but navigating it with all the strangers that are now around because of the funeral and with Jackson and everything kind of brings all of his OCD to the forefront as well to deal with. Um, the I did this in audiobook, and I have to give a kudos to Tom Picasso, who is the, uh, the narrator here. Uh, he really nails... Griffin's various emotional states from the the weighing grief in the present part of the book to the sheer happiness of his early days with Theo and all the dates that they had and everything that they did um, to really the healing that happens towards the end of the book as everybody kind of pieces the puzzle together of what really happened in California and starts to find ways to move on. Uh, the book goes for roughly, uh, I want to say, two months in total um, from um, the funeral to where it ends in its present day timeline. Uh, so you get this full kind of arc of, of Theo getting, you know, starting to heal um, afterwards. Um, there's so much in this book. Because you get that first love, and you get their romance, and then you get all of the heartbreak of the breakup and the grief of of the death, and it. You also get these moments where, at least me as an adult reader, go, "Oh, don't do that," because you just see like the train wreck that's about to happen uh, with some of the choices that these teenagers make. Um, Adam really did such a wonderful job of creating such rich and full characters. Across the board, not just with Griffin, but Theo and and new boyfriend Jackson and their best friend Wade, and even all the parents who really play supporting roles here, are so well kind of fleshed out and and real, and you just you feel their pain, and you also like I said, you have those moments where it's like, oh, don't do that, that's so bad, don't do that, don't. oh, you did that. But there's also twists and turns in here that I didn't see coming either, which I really appreciated. Um, so yeah, if give this a shot. It's really solid YA. Uh, you will cry, you will laugh out loud, which I did a couple times on it. Um, but yeah, I can't and I can't wait to see what Adam and Becky do together. I've got another one of Adam's books, solo books in my in my queue as well that I've already bought because it was like a a book bub at some point recently. Uh, so I will definitely be reading more of Adam Silvera and highly recommend History is all you all History is all you left me. So if you're watching the video right now, you're probably watching me make a lot of really confused and incredulous <laughs> faces. I'm going to ask you a question. I didn't think they were incredulous necessarily. Well, okay, maybe that's not the exact <laughs> word I'm looking for. But I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Because I personally think that book sounds horrible. It's all about OCD and it's all about death and all about pain and people working through horrible things. Why? Can you sum up why you like that book? I really like the range of emotion okay. that's displayed because, yes, there's pain, but there is the path to healing at the end. Okay. So you're not left in a, oh, my God, what did I just read? Um, it is a roller coaster of a journey. Of a, It's a roller coaster emotional journey for sure. Um, I would liken it to, um, oh, God, John Green. And I'm like totally blanking on its name all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. The one with the movie. Um, <laughs> well, actually, he's had a few movies now. Oh my God. Um, help me. Fault in our stars. Thank you. <laughs> I would liken it. Don't just laugh at me. Help me. I'm sorry, but. Um, I'd liken it to Fault in Our Stars because, I mean, that's a movie that's got some heavy grief in it. Mm -hmm. And, but you, it, it's really one of those books where you get all the feels. Okay. I mean, it's all kind of just bundled up in a really good. 
uh, package there. All right. And like I said at the beginning, it is a tough book. And if you don't want to read something that is going to make you cry, you have to go through this funeral, then perhaps don't pick this one up. But if you want all of those feels, um, give this a go because it's, it's really exceptional. All right. Did that help clarify? Yeah. I think so. Good. I think so. And sorry I babbled through that review. (laughs) I tried to to sum it up in the best way that I could, but I had you here to help me out. (laughs) Okay, so I also read a book this week. It has no death whatsoever. (laughs) Um, uh, I read a terrific novella by Jason and Ed Gaffney. Uh, It's called Creating Clark. Now, we had Jason and Ed on last year. They appeared in episodes 89 and 90. Um, And this is the first novella in their uh, California comedy series. Um, I really, really enjoyed... um, They were on the show kind of promoting the third book in that particular series. Mm -hmm. So I am finally, after all this time, going back and uh, reading the beginning. They're all standalone... um, uh, really fun, tropey romances, and Creating Clark is a makeover story. Uh, it involves uh, Clark, a nice guy. He's a coffee shop owner, and he happens to have a crush on one of the regulars. He comes in every morning uh, and gets his, you know, a mocha latte something something. <laughs> I don't know much about coffee. Uh, he gets his fancy beverage, and then he goes. Uh, and But Clark is absolutely in love with him, and he doesn't know how to have a, a, a conversation okay. uh, other than, you know, what would you like to drink? <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, poor, poor Clark uh, is constantly at a loss for words when this uh, beautiful guy comes in every morning. So what he does is he asks his best friend Hunter for advice uh, on how to talk to this guy. Um, Hunter uh, is an actor. He his his one big thing. He was the the spokes spokes guy for like a, a pizza chain. So he's had some like national pizza commercials. That's was his like one big thing so far. Anyway, Hunter uh, is wants what's best for his friend, and he seems really into this guy. So he agrees to give Clark a makeover. They go, they get him a brand new wardrobe, they get him a haircut, and, and they also go through some. Uh, sort of a dating boot camp. They get, they go through different scenarios uh, to kind of get Clark to like loosen up and act like a normal person <laughs> when he's around this uh, guy that he's interested in. So during all of these different run-throughs, Hunter comes to the realization that Clark is actually a pretty pretty spectacular guy. He's been sort of hiding behind some schlubby clothes and a you know, bad haircut, but he really finally comes to the realization that that he's really into Clark. Um, And uh, as they go through the motions of of building the possibility for uh, making Clark dateable, um, (laughs) um, uh, one of their training sessions goes a little too far and they end up sleeping together. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's a problem. Uh, Immediately, they they back off, and they both admit that that was a huge mistake. That's not what this was about at all. Uh, But Hunter finally realizes that Clark is amazing, and he wants to be in a relationship. It all comes to a head at the big charity gala. Um, Clark gets his act together and does ask this guy out on a date, and they go to a big charity function. So... It's up to Hunter to finally make his move and and go to this function uh, and get to him first before poor, poor Clark makes the mistake of his life and commits to this guy who, who's not ideal. Um, so I really enjoyed um, this book an awful, awful lot. I think um, Jason and Ed really zero in on uh, familiar tried and true tropes uh, and make um, wonderful, funny, likable characters that go through these sometimes outrageous situations. Um, Creating Clark is, of course, a a makeover story. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's also a friends-to-lovers story. So if you're into those tropes, I highly recommend you check this novella out. Cool. 
I have no follow-up questions to that review, because, of course, you did a really good job. Well, thank you. I swear, he's trying to reform the way I do reviews on the show, and one day I'll get it right. <laughs> um, I want to take, quickly talk about an event that happened in New York City recently, that there are some wonderful videos to watch on YouTube. Uh, each year, the MCC Theater, which is one of the not-for-profit off-Broadway companies, although they may they actually have a Broadway house now. Mm -hmm, I think they um, do. They actually have a Broadway house where they do some stuff uh, on the main stem. Um, each year, they do a fundraiser called Miscast, which is the opportunity for... Uh, people who wouldn't normally be cast in a role to sing songs. So men sing women's songs and women sing men's songs. And it's just songs that they wouldn't normally get to sing in a show. Um, always amazing performances come out of this. And this year is no exception. Uh, of, of the batch that I've been able to see so far, Jeremy Jordan, who is so amazing. They should just find a way for him to sing on Supergirl every week. Uh, he does She Used to Be Mine, uh, which is one of the most amazing songs from Waitress. And he just really nails that performance so amazingly well. Um, Sarah Bareilles, <clears throat> excuse me, who of course wrote Waitress, uh, she takes on the song from Ragtime called Make Them Hear You, uh, which is, to me, one of the most important songs running around out there right now just because of the times that we live in. Uh, of course, she was amazing with that. Uh, I think my possibly my favorite clip of all the ones that I've seen from this year is Robert Fairchild. He is a, uh, a former dancer from the New York City Ballet who starred in An American in Paris when it was on Broadway a few years ago. He takes on the music in the mirror, which of course is the big number uh, from a chorus line. And not only does he sing it, but he dances it oh so well. Uh, I, I don't know why we never went to this when we lived in New York, uh, with the exception of the fact that it's a little pricey. Because it is a fundraiser. Yeah. Um, but they always put the uh, clips up on YouTube. Uh, so we're going to link to the show notes, uh, link to the show notes to the MCT channel. I'll mention these videos in particular. But you should also watch earlier versions of Miscast because there's a ver there's from 2017, uh, Norbert Leo Butts, who's known for being in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, the original cast of the last five years, mm -hmm. uh, and so many under other wonderful shows. Uh, takes on, and I'm telling you, I'm not going from Dream Girls, and I can't tell you how amazing he was in that. So, some theater for you guys to check out over on YouTube. Did you know that podcasts love to get reviews too? Taking a moment to leave a review about the Big Gay Fiction Podcast helps us with the show's visibility online. Please take a moment to visit iTunes and leave a review. Your comments help other readers of gay romance discover this show. Thanks for helping us spread the word about the Big Gay Fiction Podcast. So last fall, a new podcast came on to the scene. Uh, Jessica and Marky introduced us all to the Top to Bottom Podcast. Uh, they came onto the scene shortly after GRL uh, because I think it was Marky who went mm -hmm. to GRL. Uh, and they came on, and they're a Book of the Month Club, which is what BOTM, spelled B-O-T-M, is actually uh, an acronym for. And we fell pretty much immediately in love with this show. Uh, love so much that there are readers out there who are doing a podcast uh, about the genre. And so we wanted to have them on the show and talk to them about uh, their reading influences and about the show and everything else. And I think we had a really good time with them. We had a fantastic time. We love these girls two pieces. And if you're not listening to Top to Bottom, we highly recommend it. <laughs> so here they are, Jessica and Marky. We're excited to welcome fellow podcasters Marky and Jessica from the Top to Bottom podcast. They premiered in October 2017, and we became fans immediately after hearing that first broadcast. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having us. It's awesome to be on the show. Yeah, yeah we're excited to have uh, podcasters who are readers on the show. The other podcasts that, that look at the genre are run by other authors, a lot like this one. And it's <laughs> great to have readers having a podcast. It's so awesome. Now, for people who may not listen to your show yet, and everybody should be checking you out, um, introduce yourselves for us. So I guess I'll go first. Uh, my name is Marky. Um, I'm basically just a... MM romance dork. So we, we, we're, we're both pretty big readers, but uh, this genre in particular is one of my favorites. So um, I've been reading it for a while and I kind of just drug Jess into it too. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I'm Jessica. Um, I am a general nerd overall. I, I have um, just one switch. It's either obsessed or uninterested. So um, <laughs> when I was drugged into this, um, I just dove right into it. So, yeah. That's awesome. Now, of course, the, the first big question would be, how did you discover gay romance? And, and what were some of your first books? Man, we were well, we were trying to figure out how to answer this without talking for 30 minutes. Um, and then we talked for 30 minutes. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so um, I think my first dabble into the uh, gay romance, which I guess technically isn't classified as one, was the Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice, specifically like Vampire Lestat. Um, I got into that when I was in like high school. And didn't realize that that's what made me love the genre. I mean, the, her writing in general was fantastic, but that's what really made me love the characters so much. And it wasn't until way later in life, um, I can't remember what made me get back into it, but I started looking up, like, epic fantasy novels, and I got into the Luck in the Shadow series and read, like, three or four of those books. And then I think I somehow tripped and fell and found Cut and Run, and then from there it was just the rabbit hole goes down forever. <laughs> so. yeah, um, I do everything she does. Um, <laughs> we, we've been recommending books to each other since we've been friends. We've been friends for like a decade. And um, so she, I don't remember, was it Captive Prince? Yeah. Was it Captive Prince yeah. that got, okay, so she was obsessing about this and freaking out about it and saying, you have to read this. And if she was obsessed about it, that meant I would be too. So, um yeah, I just doubled in, and then it was a series of angry text messages about what she's done to my life now, and <laughs> haven't looked back. <laughs> Has it become the dominant thing that you read now, or are you still branching into other genres? I still re I have to read a lot. We have other book clubs, and um, I have to read a lot because I just need it. Um, so I, I read a lot of different things when I can, but it's been primarily male-male romance for like the last year yeah. with some offshoots on series I continue to follow, but mine's pretty much all just gay romance. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's all I read now. So how did you make the leap to decide to start a podcast? So, um, again, we've been friends for a long time and we have this tendency to, uh, Lucy and Ethel our way into obsessions and things and projects and, and things that we're going to do, um, to leave our normal jobs behind. Uh, not going to happen, but, um, <laughs> so we've had all of these different projects and stuff that we wanted to do. And, and this was something that we were, she was getting me really into these books. And so I was just jokingly saying, hey, we should totally do a podcast. And she was like, podcast. <laughs> oh yes, let's do it. I've, I've looked up all of this stuff. Let's start. We can record next week. Right. <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Wow, that's just kind of d diving right in. I think we researched it for a couple months before we took the big plunge. <laughs> yeah, we researched probably, it for just some hours. Yeah, that probably would have been a better thing to do because there was a lot of hiccups and, oh, I thought it was going to work this way. What What do you mean that we can't record in one go for with no edits? This should only take 10 minutes, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired the book of the month idea? Because I, I find your show unique in that, you know, you've got the top episode where you introduce the book and the bottom episode where you talk about the book. Uh, how did that come about? Well, like had, Jess had mentioned, we, we run uh, a couple other book clubs that we do for fun. And so when we got into the genre, it was, it just felt like the natural step for us to take since we, the, we do those the, whole reason, <laughs> the whole reason anybody is ever in a book club is so you can have other people to talk about the books that you're reading with. If you want to freak out about it or hate it or love it or whatever, there's other people there that can, you know, share or, or contradict or whatever. And that's why we've done book clubs in the past for other things and, that was most of our friends aren't super big readers and we really wanted to find other people that would talk about these books with us aside from each other. Yeah. And that was really the primary driving force, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We wanted to find more people to talk, uh, talk about these books with and, and share our love for them. And so we kind of felt like that was the best way to do it. Yeah. Us too. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally, totally a hundred percent. Yeah, we just didn't go the book club route. We just do the reviews and and put it out there for other folks to hear. Um, how's the reaction been? Do you have other people who join you on these odysseys each month? I mean, we're we're still pretty new, so our our 
little tiny pool is growing. We've got like we'll have more people joining in on our um, Goodreads page and stuff like that. But it's it's been pretty light. So we we're hoping to grow more people to have more interactions. So we have more things to discuss on the show. So we could say like, oh, so and so said they really like this part or whatever. But yeah. so far we're still pretty new. So. Yeah, we have some interactions through the Facebook page and stuff. So we do have people talking, but it's not as much about the specific books. Except for in the Goodreads, we've had we've had some traction there, but. Yeah. Um, we'll get more. We will bring more people into our yeah, we're not cave. Even, yeah, we're not even a year old yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there there is always that that time to kind of get cranking out there, which is another reason we want to have you guys on the show and help broaden that out a little bit if we can, because um, awesome. it, it's a fun show. It really is. Uh, what other podcasts do you guys listen to? Besides y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of podcasts that I listen to, (laughs) Um, but nothing, the only other like literary one I listen to is uh, Sword and Laser, which is a sci-fi fantasy uh, book club. And that's kind of what started me on podcasts in general. I listen to a lot of science stuff like planet. We were both involved with uh, the planetary society and they have a podcast that we listen to. I don't know if I, other than Y'all's and Swords of Sword and Laser, I don't know if I read or if I read any other podcasts. If I follow any other like book podcasts, so yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I'm not not BSing. You guys are on on my. Oh, right, there we are. So, <laughs> uh, there's a D and D one I listen to. There's a couple of D and D ones. Oh, do you I still to. do the um, welcome, Night Vale? Stuff? Yeah, Welcome to Night Vale. Okay, good. That you know, just. I li- I don't listen to as much as I'd like to now because I, I try to do audiobooks because I don't have near as much time to read everything I want to read. But um, yeah, I do I do bunches of those. Yeah. Yeah, audiobooks do help a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, trying to cut that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just speed that up. Speed, speed, speed. Yes. <laughs> has, has the podcast changed the way you read? Yeah, yeah, it really does. Because we were discussing that Jess is super, really, really big into supernatural and paranormal stuff. And we read the Temptation series, and you discussed that, the, like, on its base surface, it probably wasn't what yeah. you would have picked up. I would have never, um, I think we'll talk about this more later. I, I would never, like, aim right at, like, a normal contemporary kind of thing, because just at its face value to me, I'm like, two normal people doing normals, I don't care. <laughs> um, but this has definitely <laughs> opened up some things that I wouldn't have read before. Um, it also limits a lot of other stuff. Like I, I follow several series and several genres and a lot of them are in my to read pile that I wouldn't have waited on before. And I just, I have to get these books done. And I, when we start a series, I can't just stop at the first book. So yeah, it's, it definitely, it's, um, I still read as much as I did before, but it, it's, uh, definitely consuming my reading time for sure. <laughs> what about you, Marky? Yeah, it's we picking up because what we'll do is I'll I'll go in and look at authors that are really popular or ones that are recommended a ton because I'll I go and follow everything on Facebook, like different groups and stuff. So if I see something surface over and over, like people are really excited about this particular new author or this established author or whatever, um, I'll stick it in our like, okay, well, we need to pick up one of these books because apparently they're fantastic. Whereas on my own, I probably would have stuck within like, I really like like cop drama dramas and stuff like that. So I would have stuck in that um, genre. And now we've kind of done a little bit of stuff that I've never done before. So it's, it's forced me out of my, my tiny little, like, this is what I like. So I'm going to stick in this tiny bubble. And now we kind of read a little bit of everything, which is fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think we're kind of the same way too. Um, because we're <laughs> every, every, nearly every day we, we, we you know, at some point we, we touch on, well, what are we going to talk about on this week's show? <laughs> um, uh, we got to come up with something to talk about. So and usually that means planning ahead on which guests we're going to interview. And then, of course, we need to, you know, have some knowledge about what they write. So um, reading their books and kind of trying to be as informed as possible uh, on the mm-hmm. genre, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and having people recommend, oh yeah, things to us that like authors saying, "Hey, I'd like to be on the show. Can you read my book?" or something like that has put stuff in front of me that I would have never picked up and then totally loved it. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing too is having the authors reaching out. It, yeah, that we've... targets a lot of it because it would have been 
there's so many to choose from and, and <laughs> yeah. so many it's hard, hard to get somebody on the radar and and that's mm-hmm. opened up some people that we wouldn't have necessarily read mm-hmm. or known to at least. yeah exactly yeah that's more what it is we just didn't know that they're great and so <laughs> <laughs> we had it placed in front of us so now you mentioned paranormal a little bit. Uh, what are some of your other favorite genres or or just romance tropes that are just totally your jam? Do you, I was about to say, do you want to? You had a great answer for it. Did I? Well, I liked your answer. We <laughs> were discussing it beforehand. She's like, "Well, this is how I feel about this." Okay, okay. Well, I had a hard time with that because I don't. One, I'm not as familiar with like the specific tropes. I mean, I know there's like you know you know enemies to lovers and things like that. Uh, but what it comes down to it for me is that if there's great characters and great chemistry, it almost doesn't matter how they're together or why they're together or how they do whatever they're going to do. I will read them going to the grocery store and hanging out or whatever. I don't care. I just want to read those characters in whatever setting. Um, but I, I do like paranormal stuff and whatever as far as genre is concerned. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I had mine all prepared. I was like, yeah, I love enemies to lovers, and I love cop dramas. And she's like, you know what? It doesn't matter. As long as, 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 long as the characters are great. I was like, oh, that's a way better answer than mine. Not better, just different. Just different. It's way less specific, and I felt bad about not having a specific answer. <laughs> Is there or something that you've discovered uh, that you've read you know, because of the show that you were surprised about that you're like, oh, I'm kind of into that? The contemporary thing, reading uh, the Temptation series from Ella Frank, um, mm-hmm. again, I wouldn't have normally gone for that, and I am enamored with those books. I think they're fantastic. I love the characters. It's just super fun to read. Um, and I really... I, so I'm, I'm a novice to all this. I, this is all new for me. Like Probably over just a little over a year I've been reading Male Male Romance, and so I don't have a huge pool to p- pick from. Um, but like... Uh, we just read the K.A. Americans um, Guns and Boys series, mm-hmm. and so the Mafia thing, I, I don't think I've read any Mafia books before, and so that was really kind of interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, I would probably agree with you with the Temptation stuff, because I usually try to go for, like like I mentioned, like cop dramas and, and crime stuff. I love that stuff. So when we picked up Ella Frank's series, it was probably the most contemporary stuff I'd ever read, and I was like, wow, this is really good, and it's really just two people living their lives. Like, this is really interesting. And it, and it definitely opened up my willingness to check out other things that I wouldn't normally, because that was, it was just so great that I know that there's really amazing writers out there that can do a lot with everyday life. And I think that that's where my own limitations come from, is I have a hard time imagining amazing things happening in everyday life. Right. But, so. <laughs> now, your April top episode comes out the same day that this episode does. Uh, what can listeners look forward to uh, for April? So we're still, uh, we, we know who we're reading, and we are still lining up definites, but we're really hoping we're going to have Mary Calms on, hopefully. Yes. We're reading her books. Best case scenario, we, were ha- we will have her on the top episode. Mm-hmm. Worst, or well, second best, we'll have her on the bottom episode, and third best, we'll just be reading one of her awesome books. <laughs> yes. <so. laughs> Uh, we don't know which one yet, though, so. Yeah, but definitely, she's definitely going to be our April pick. So we're, we're picking out which ones we want to try to go for. And, and maybe if she can weasel us in, because she's really busy. So if yeah. she can, we're going to try to get her on the show, too. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, she's got some good stuff. I'm only recently uh, have been, she's been around forever. And I finally only read one of her books, like, late last year. I don't know nice. why, why that was such a gap for me there, but <laughs> it was. <laughs> Yeah, same with us, because I've, I've heard her name forever and a half. Like, as soon as you, like, you know, tiptoe into the genre, she's one of the big names. So I was like, okay, and, like, she, I've got, like, four or five of her books on my to-read list. So when we were cycling through, I was like, why haven't we done this yet? So Because we have, like, 12 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Marky, I think it was you who was at GRL last year, so you and you, you stuck your toe into in, into that part of the the fandom and genre what what were your impressions uh it was kind of overwhelming in a fun way because like i had talked about on the show it was i i went by myself because she wasn't able to go and the friend who i was traveling with has had zero want to go so i i went in totally blind i didn't know anybody there and like as soon as i got there i had people to hang out with I, people were letting me sit with them and chatting about things like it's it's 
it was my first meeting with the community and I immediately fell in love with it. Like everyone is so sweet and inclusive and wonderful and will immediately, you know, take you in under their wing, like no matter what. So at that point I was so happy that we had started the podcast because I was like, if this is who are, who we're going to be sharing this stuff with, I'm in. Like it was so great. <laughs> and you're going to Virginia this year? Yes. I already bought my ticket and everything and, and Jess can't go. Cause she's getting married. <laughs> yeah, my wedding is the weekend after, so it was, I mean, very excited, but the timing is... Yeah, she was like, what day is it? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, you know, next year. I will definitely go there next year. That is definitely going to happen. Even though it's right on top of your honeymoon, or your anniversary, rather. That doesn't matter. We've been together for a billion years. It's, it's, it doesn't He'll even matter. He'll be fine. He'll be <laughs> fine. He doesn't care. He understands that this is important, but, yeah. you know, it's it's got to happen. Or and... bring him along. Husbands come to that all the time, so. I'm imagining that. And it's <laughs> he's not even a reader. And, like, he doesn't, he's, 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 he does other things. He's, like, he does some audiobooks, but he's not, like a reader kind he wouldn't even care <laughs> i'll just let him hang out in the hotel room and have drinks there you <laughs> go. he can manage what are your future plans for the show what do you, how do you want to see it grow and evolve over the over the coming months and years really want to build the community around the book club so we can have those people to talk to the books about about the books too so yeah. it's, it's i think that's our main goal and then beyond that we're just seeing what sticks. Like this is such just a for fun project for us that we're just kind of running with it and seeing what it, we can do as we go along. And also we're trying to see just how many of our favorite authors we can weasel onto the show. Yeah. <laughs> so we can fangirl out about them. <laughs> I've been amazed at how many people have said yes so far. <laughs> yeah. I'm always, I'm always so convinced they're gonna be like, Oh, I appreciate it, but I'm busy. But most everyone we've reached out to so far is like, sure. What day? I'm like, really? <laughs> do you really? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a tremendous as you've noted, it's a tremendous community that that are out there and it's yeah, we we've, we've been very lucky too that so far it's been like you want to come on like yeah, absolutely, let's do it. <laughs> so yeah, that's very cool. Now how do people find your show? Uh, well, we're on Stitcher, iTunes. What else are we have? I don't know, you Google Play. <laughs> Um, you can find it through our website, which is top to bottom podcast.com and bottom is B O T M for book of the month. Um, we are on Facebook and you can find the links through there. Yes. Probably Twitter too. Yes. Yes. yes we're, on, we're on Twitter too. Yep. You're on Twitter too. <laughs> we'll link to all those, all those things in our show notes so that people can go find you awesome. for sure. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for a, for a few minutes. We we ho wish you the best of success. And again, we're, we're thrilled that's, that readers are out there um, making a podcast to talk about this genre. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> thank you for having us on. It's been awesome. Like like we had mentioned, we're already fans of the show. So when you guys reached out to us, we were like, all right. Like, this is so cool. <laughs> so yeah, as we mentioned, their April top episode comes out today. Monday, April 2nd, so the same time as this episode comes out. So after you listen to us, you should go hop over and, and check them out. Uh, I have to say that in their March bottom episode, um, they coined one of the best phrases ever with a tortilla of melancholy. Uh, they reviewed God's Own Country in their March bottom episode, <laughs> and part of their description was that it was a, a tortilla of melancholy, which I love <laughs> that term. Um, so kudos to you two for coming up with that, because that was awesome. But yeah, <laughs> definitely check them out. Uh, their show is always good. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll do it for this week. Coming up in episode 131, uh, as we mentioned, Tammy Middleton will be here to talk about her Autism Awareness Month auction, as well as her latest book called Lava. Yes. Well done. It was very <laughs> Sex in the City. <laughs> very Carrie Bradshaw there. Uh, so be sure and tune in for that. Guys, remember, no matter where life takes you, the journey will always be sweeter when you have a book. So until next week, guys, keep turning those pages and keep reading. For detailed show notes and the complete episode backlist, go to BigGayFictionPodcast.com. New episodes are available every Monday on all major podcast distributors and YouTube. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. 